In this video, we'll go back in time and take a look at one of the darkest chapters in human history. A chapter called Witch Hunts that caused the lives of many innocent people and shows that the human being can do extremely horrible things to others in the name of religion and justice. We're all familiar with witches due to fairy tales, movies and books. The public image of a typical witch looks something like this. An old and evil lady who has some severe scoliosis is stirring a large kettle at which some green liquid is bubbling. She is holding people in tiny cages captive just to use their body parts as ingredients for her magic potion. And every night she takes her broom and flies through the sky and is looking out for her next victims. But did you know that even ancient high cultures were worried about witchcraft? Ancient Egypt, Babylon and Assyria believed in the existence of some type of demonic creatures that used magic for evil purposes. Even though there wasn't a specific persecution, there were still some executions of supposed witches. Even in the Bible you can find the mentions of a witch, King Saul, who was according to the Hebrew Bible the first ruler of Israel, had a conflict with the Philistine army. In order to defeat this mighty foe, he sought the witch of Endor. The desperate king asked the witch to summon the spirit of the prophet Samuel because he was in need of every bit of help. The witch granted Saul his wish. Furthermore, she had some clairvoyant abilities. She prophesied that Saul and his sons will die and the very next day his sons passed away at the battlefield. Saul was utterly devastated and so he took his own life. And through the course of time, witches gained more and more notoriety. Especially during the Middle Ages, people decided to put on their tinfoil hats and hunt supposed witches because it was believed that they had a deal with the devil and that they worked for him. Witch hunts became extremely popular in the Middle Ages and they continued until the 18th century. Then people discovered something which is called common sense. Well, that's actually not entirely true. Your BS meter is probably going crazy as it should, but you heard me. Even in our lifetime, there are still supposed witches who are facing extreme hardship. In some parts of the world, like in Papua New Guinea, South America and in Africa, there are still some cases in which supposed witches get beaten or even killed. And as we have learned earlier, their belief in witchcraft is very old, but it wasn't always as extreme as in the 17th century. For example, during the times of the Roman Empire, people did believe in sorcery, but they did also consider the intentions of the magic and since the 3rd century they punished the malpractice of witchcraft. During the 5th century, Christianity got more influential and thus the tone changed dramatically. They stopped caring whether a practitioner of witchcraft had at least good intentions. They wanted to punish any act of sorcery with death. And do you want to hear something that is so crazy, which makes it almost funny in a twisted way? The early Christians didn't even believe that magic had any effects. The mere attempt was reason enough to execute people. The church scholar Augustine was probably one of the reasons why witch hunts were so extremely popular in the Middle Ages. He believed that magic had absolutely no effect, but at the same time, it required to have a pact with the devil. A man who went by the name Thomas Aquinas, who was a philosopher and one of the most important Catholic theologians, said that witchcraft is only possible because of the devil. And this idea spread like fire. More and more church scholars started to release treatises that created an image of witch sects that terrified the public. Authors and preachers supported those views and so the people became more afraid but also willing to destroy their new enemy. The 15th century was when excrements started to hit the fan. A German inquisitor named Heinrich Kramer absolutely hated witches and he really didn't like women in general. But before I move on, let's explain what the word inquisition means. It was basically a court of the Catholic Church that viewed heretics and renegades as its enemy. So these people were usually treated with extreme violence. This special facility of the church existed from the 12th century 
all the way to the 18th century. But back to Kramer. In 1478, Kramer was the inquisitor of the upper part of Germany. Within a couple of years, he made sure that a lot of supposed witches got executed. And in 1484, Kramer wrote a document in which he demanded an allowance to prosecute witches. Pope Innocent VIII signed this paper, which resulted in the legalization of witch hunts. But Kramer's views were not accepted in every single city. In fact, he was forced to leave his own hometown. Because of his shortcomings, he wrote his book, which is called Merleus Maleficium. In there, he describes the crimes that were committed by witches, and so he created rules for the processes against them. And by publishing his book in 1487, Kramer's ideology gained a huge appeal from the general public. Especially women were targeted. According to some sources, 80% of the victims were females, and between 1500 and 1660, it is estimated that around 80,000 people were executed. The leading country in this regard was Germany. I know it seems to be fairly hard to comprehend how this could have happened, but back then, people lived under very harsh conditions and believed what others told them. The Council of Basel, which was held from 1431 to 1449, was very important for the spread of the fear of witchcraft because it changed the idea about who witches were. The Catholic Church pointed out that witches are not just acting as individuals, but rather as a sect. People believed that witches were deeply connected with the devil and therefore they were viewed as utterly evil and dangerous. The public image that women were driven by lust and thus got into a relationship with the devil spread like fire, which resulted in a mass hysteria. So there were several reasons for witch hunts. One of those reasons was the incredibly hard time. By the end of the 15th century, the quality of life was fairly low. There were long and tough winters which was absolutely devastating because the crop was very bad and people were faced with malnourishment and even starvation. Furthermore, more individuals got sick and epidemics took the lives of many people. It was hard to deal with this unforgiving misfortune and thus people searched for scapegoats that they could blame for their suffering. And at that time, it seemed logical that magic was the source of the pain. And so, supposed witches were accused to cause all the harm with their evil abilities. This was like a perfect storm for people who hated witches. Their ideas could flourish fairly easily because of the widespread desperation. When we take a look at the 17th century, we can clearly see how harsh life really was. Central Europe was plagued by the horrors of the Thirty Years' War. The war itself was brutal enough, but it also took a toll on the food supply because many fields were fallow. And on top of that, there was extreme cold that made the suffering unbearable and people started to look for somebody that they could hold responsible for their situation. But hunger, war and disease were not the only reasons for witch hunts. Sometimes people had personal motives for accusing someone to be a witch. Things like personal conflicts could very well result into a denunciation of a human being. Another reason is that informants got a share of the wealth of the supposed witches after they got executed. And since the letter print was invented in 1450, it allowed that the information reach more people, so the propaganda spread like fire. Oppositional views were simply censored. With the rising popularity of witch hunts, the danger of criticism of the processes increased as well. So even though not all people supported the idea, they were too scared to do something about it. And especially in Central Europe, it was more dangerous to be an opponent because rumors spread way faster due to the fact that people lived in fairly dense populated cities. Let's take a closer look at the process against witches itself. First of all, there had to be some types of conspiracies or allegations that could have existed for quite a while. The next step was the denunciation, which resulted many times in a charge. And then began a truly horrific time for many supposed witches. After being imprisoned, the victims were often held captive in basements or in towers. There, they had to undress and get their head shaven, because it was thought that the supposed witch might be hiding some magic potions. Instead, they had to wear specially made shirts for witches. And while they remained in captivity, 
the supposed witches were often raped and violated by the executioner. Then began the interrogation, which was based on ridiculous questions, like for example, if the supposed witch had intercourse with the devil, or if they had any deals with him. You're probably asking yourself, why didn't they just deny those allegations? Well, it was easier said than done. Remember, common sense wasn't really a thing back in those days. And if the interrogation didn't result in the desired outcome, aka in a confession, then things got more and more serious. The interrogators started to use some intimidation tactics. They showed their torture devices and explained exactly how they worked. After explaining the function of the torture devices, followed the actual torture. The goal was to break a victim's spirit and to make them confess, because only that made an execution possible. Also sleep deprivation and hard beatings were other tools that pushed people to confess to whatever the interrogators wanted to hear. As you can imagine, their methods eventually worked and the victims confessed, which resulted in thousands of deaths. It's unbelievable what people did and still do to one another. And nobody thinks that they're doing something wrong. But anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I would really appreciate any form of feedback. Thanks for watching and until next time.